In short, NeoWise. Today's information and graphics can be obtained on the web at www.nasa.gov slash wise. We will have brief presentations from our presenters, then open it up for questions at our NASA centers in the phone bridge. Before we get started, let me introduce you to today's speakers. First up, Lindley Johnson, NEO Program Executive, NASA Headquarters, Washington. Amy Meinzer, <laughs> Investigator, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Tim Spark, Director, Minor Planet Center, Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And Lucy McFadden, Scientist, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. And with that, I'll toss it to Lindley to start us off. Thanks, Duane. Thank you all for tuning in to hear about our progress with the Near Earth Object Observation Program. We're here today to provide an update of our understanding of the Near Earth asteroid population and announce uh, achievement of some significant goals uh, in finding our nearest neighbors in the solar system. Over the past 12 years, our work to find near Earth asteroids has largely been done by uh, several ground-based observatory teams. But in 2010, NASA augmented those efforts by enhancement of the ground processing of the data being returned by the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. This enhancement project, called NEOWISE, processed all the sky images sent back from WISE to detect objects moving across the sky background, those objects that would be in our solar system. This was mainly done to find near-Earth asteroids and comets, but a great many main belt asteroids and other objects in the solar system were also found. The year of WISE observation also led to two very significant findings for the near-Earth object observation business. The NEOWISE project has confirmed completion of the original goal set with Congress back in 1998 of our program, uh, which was to find 90% of the one kilometer and larger near-Earth asteroids. The second significant finding is the population of medium-sized near-Earth asteroids, those between 100 meters and one kilometer in size, is probably somewhat less than we were estimating before. So if I could have the first graphic up. Uh, this is an animated view of our solar system looking down from the sun uh, with the inner planet's uh, orbits depicted as circles. Uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars is the outer uh, ring. I have to point out that this uh, diagram, the sizes of these objects, is not to scale. If there were, even the planets would be uh, so small that you couldn't really see them. So if we could have the uh, animation of motion now, all the small red dots seemingly swirling about like gnats are in their orbits about the sun uh, um, are shown in the, uh, in the red. Uh, those that uh, we previously knew about are now shown in yellow or maybe orange in some screens. Uh, those that were detected by the NEOWISE project are now in blue, and the new objects that were detected by NEOWISE are now shown in white. From this sample that the WISE, uh, uh, NEOWISE project uh, was able to find, We've projected a more accurate model of the overall population that is over 40% less in numbers, which we now compare here with the old model uh, of the estimated population. So you can see considerably less numbers. So if this new model holds up, it will mean the number of 100 meter and larger near-Earth asteroids yet to be found is somewhat less. But even this new population, uh, there are over 15,000 objects still to be found. It will take more capable systems and several more years of survey efforts to find these relatively small and dim objects, it's something like trying to detect a candle at the distance of the moon. To tell us more about the NEOWISE project is our principal investigator, Dr. Amy Manger. Well, thanks, Lindley, and thanks all of you for tuning in this afternoon. Uh, it's great to be here. WISE was a very short mission, and we're very happy to have these results to present so quickly. So as Lindley mentioned, we find that there are fewer near-Earth asteroids out there. However, it's very important to note that fewer does not mean none. 
And there are still tens of thousands that are out there that we need to find that are left. As one of my colleagues at uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory likes to say, the best three ways of dealing with the potential of an asteroid impact are to find them early, find them early, and find them early. If you can find near-Earth asteroids when they're far away, it would take far less energy to mitigate a potentially threatening object. So this is why we carry out surveys like the ones that Lindley has described and like NEOWISE. So uh, one of the characteristics of NEOWISE is that it really was a fairly small telescope in a low Earth orbit. In fact, the telescope would kind of fit under your arm like this, so it's not particularly large. But by virtue of being in space and operating at infrared wavelengths, it's a very powerful telescope, and it turns out to be very good at finding asteroids and comets. Now, if you go to the first animation here, you can see a little representation of what WISE looks like going around the Earth. It's always pointing outward from the Earth, surveying the whole sky, and as the Earth goes around the Sun, this allows the telescope to very quickly and efficiently carry out a survey of the whole sky. And in fact, it was so fast we were able to survey the whole sky twice in infrared wavelengths in only one year. And you can see here a little representation of the difference between visible light and the infrared light that WISE was able to see. So this was a very efficient and effective way of surveying the sky. And the original purpose of the mission was actually to study cool stars in very distant galaxies, and it's doing a great job of that. However, it turns out to also be very good at detecting asteroids. This is because it's using infrared light. If we look at the next slide here, we can see two asteroids. We can see a close-up of them. One is very bright and kind of uh, shiny, more reflective, and the other one is very dark, like a piece of charcoal or barbecue soot at the bottom of your barbecue. They're both the same size, however. Now, when we're close up to these asteroids, you can actually see that they're the same size. But the problem is, most of the time, we're not close up to the asteroids. If we roll the animation, we can start to see what happens next. When we're close up, it's easy to get a very good estimate of their sizes, but now imagine that they're far away and we're observing them through a very distant telescope. If, even, at the, even if they're at the same distance to this visible light telescope, the one that is brighter is going to appear brighter to the visible light telescope, and the one that's darker looks fainter. However, if we can look with an infrared telescope, what we're seeing now is actually heat that's being emitted from the objects. And so to the infrared telescope, they look the same brightness. And from that, we're able to determine their sizes. The other benefit of this is it means that infrared telescopes are less intrinsically biased against finding small, dark near-Earth asteroids. And this gives us a better representative sample of the true population. So with NEOWISE, we didn't go out and find every single asteroid that's out there, but we got a good representative sample, kind of like doing a census where you take a poll of a, of a small subset of people that you think is representative of what everybody thinks. And so that's what we've been able to do with NEOWISE. If we go to our next chart, we can see how these results have applied. If we look at the very largest asteroids, these are one kilometer and larger objects. So these are the, the planet busters. These are the things that are like the one that is thought to have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. The good news here is that with NEOWISE, we've been able to confirm that the worldwide community of astronomers, both amateur and professional, all over the place, have now found more than 90% of all of these really big asteroids. And that's represented as the filled-in asteroids, the ones that look sort of tan. We believe that there are something like 981 in the total population. And this is very close to the original estimate of about 1,000 objects. That's what you see in the blue outline right there. The green outline represents the, the difference in our prediction with NEOWISE. So we're saying the total number is about the same, but the, the new thing here is that we can now confirm that we have met the so-called Space Guard goal of finding 90% of all the one-kilometer asteroids. So we know where they are, and by virtue of the fact that we know these objects and we know their orbits, we can predict that they are no longer uh, hazardous to Earth in the sense that we can follow them. And, and we know that there are none that pose any imminent risk of an impact. If we look at smaller sizes with the NEOWISE data, if we go to the next line in the chart, you can start to see the differences in the previous prediction of the population versus our prediction of the population. The previous prediction is shown as the blue outlines and our prediction is shown as the green outlines. And again, you can see that the, the fraction of objects that have already been discovered are shown as filled in. And going to still smaller sizes, we can see another layer of this. So if we could have the next layer in the chart, you can see that now the prediction is showing that there are somewhat less, but we've also found uh, proportionally less of these objects. 
So there are still many remaining to be found. And if we go to the next layer, you can see that this continues. So if we go to the final layer of the chart, for objects that are smaller than about 100 meters, the Neowise survey is not really able to comment because we just didn't see very many objects that are that small. So we're not able to comment. However, previous studies indicate that there may be as many as about a million or so of these very small asteroids. But even so, if we sum up and look at all of these things, everything between uh, 100 meters and 1,000 meters, one kilometer, we believe that there's something like 19,500 predicted to exist in the total population compared to a previous estimate of about 35,000. So there are fewer. However, it's important to note that we've only found a fairly small fraction of these to date. Okay, so uh, to give us a little bit more information about infrared and uh, the value of these surveys is Tim Spar. Dr. Tim Spar is the director of the Minor Planet Center in Massachusetts. Uh, thanks for the lead-in, Amy. Um, the job of the Minor Planet Center is to collect all of the asteroid data that's taken worldwide. And so we're in a position where we interact with all the other asteroid astronomers. We collect positional data, we distribute the orbits. And one of the things that we do is to try to discriminate between near-Earth asteroids and the main belt asteroids. And from this perspective, from my perspective at the MPC, uh, the NEOWISE mission is the most important project in my career. And the real punchline of this is that they observed the size. They were able to determine the size of every object that they observed. In addition, when I combined the positional information that they gave us with that from the other surveys that Lindley described, they were able to produce a very good orbit model for all of the objects, and not just the near-Earth objects. I'm talking about the main belt asteroids, the group between Mars and Jupiter. Uh, NEOWISE observed actually 25% of the entire known asteroid population. So that was something like 150,000 objects. And uh, because they could, again, because they could determine the size of all of these objects, we were able to put together a really good model. Uh, and it's important to know that this was something that was, it was a contributory effect. This fit in perfectly with the other surveys that are already there. It looked at a different wavelength and a different area of the sky. So everything fit together very well. Now, to give a little idea of the census, we've got a video here. And all right, go ahead and start that, please. This, each little dot, again, not to scale, is an asteroid that was observed by the WISE, the NEO WISE program. In the center, you have the sun, and the outer orbit there is the orbit of Jupiter. And if you give that just a good look, you can see the sampling of all the different populations of main belt asteroids. There's objects out by Jupiter, and there's a whole bunch of objects in there near the Earth. And so that's the near-Earth asteroid population. And this is showing just over one year how powerful this program was. It observed a quarter of the known population and censused a good bunch of the inner solar system. So um, I would like to give sort of a little information on how the spacecraft works in terms of determining the sizes, and we want to make sure we get this through. So the next picture that we have here is a visible light image. This would be what you would see. Uh, go ahead, cue that one up. All right. That would be what you would see from a visible light telescope like the existing surveys that we have. So you see three asteroids that look similar brightness. Now, if we can go to the next iteration, please. So on the left-hand side, we have a small reflective object. And on the right-hand side, we have a large dark object. And again, we, as we heard before, those will look the same in the visible light. Now, if I could have the last slide, please. This is the real key. In the infrared light, we get a discrimination in the size from NEOWISE. And so on the left-hand side, the smallest object actually looks to be the dimmest in the NEOWISE images. And the right-hand side, the largest object looks to be the brightest. This is really the most important part of it. If you think of trying to do a census, you need to know the actual physical characteristics of the object. And this is what we get from NEOWISE. We got the actual sizes. And as we take a fraction of the population, we can extend that, knowing the size and the orbit characteristics to the whole asteroid population. And that, to me, is why it was so important. Uh, now, I would like to hand things over to Dr. Lucy McFadden to drill down on some of the other aspects of the project and other NASA missions.